I'm good, man. Yeah. All right. That's it, man. Yeah, yeah, early. Yeah. yeah, you get some early shocks, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't see these. Yeah. You don't see them? That's when that's when it comes after at the march. Crazy Lord. I agree with you. Why is listening to the words of this man? How you doing? All right, good to see you again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, loyal opposition. Good evening, what you call it again, Coalition of the Righteous. I have to make sure I get the party's name right. Since, it, well, you know, they say we have a party, so we could as well tell them it's the Coalition of the Righteous. If, if you're looking for a name, that's the name. But it's the loyal opposition, all right? Good to have all of you here with us this evening. As you can tell when we tell you something is 5.30, it's 5.30 we start, right? And we want to invoke God's blessing upon what we do. Our national anthem is enshrined in the national anthem regarding our dependency as a nation on God. So I'm going to ask you to stand that we can have a word of prayer. Right after that word of prayer, we're going to have uh, the national anthem. And then right after that, we're going to have uh, Marcia come and give you a word of welcome, some opening remarks. All right, so let's pray. Father, again we come to you this evening. Our national anthem enshrines you, Lord, as our guide and our provider. You're the one that we look to as a country. Regardless of how we think, how we feel, we depend upon you. You are the one that placed this nation this island where you have positioned it in a very strategic place in this world. And we thank you for looking after us over all these 60 some independent years, republic years, over the years that we existed as an island and as a country. And today, Lord, we're looking to you once more to be present with us in this event. Lord, we look to you that there would be a sense of peace, wisdom given, we pray your blessing upon those that are here, those that are coming, that they will come in safety. Lord, those that will be presenting will use their words of wisdom, that integrity, sincerity, and truth will be declared. And so, Lord, we commit this evening's session into your hands, declaring your peace, your provision, your protection. And indeed, Lord, we are thankful for the great weather that you have blessed us with. So we commit this evening into your hand and thank you for the provisions that you will make throughout the evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Please remain standing for the national anthem.
a great round of applause come on and let me correct myself quickly we are apolitical so we don't have a party all right it's just we are known as the loyal opposition coalition of the righteous and we certainly are looking forward to a great evening we have a cadre of great speakers lined up for you tonight and we are looking forward to great time with them i'm going to call on mrs marcia weeks to come and grant some opening remarks and to welcome you this evening Make her welcome, come on. Wow, thank you, Dr. Ferdinand. It's so great to be here um, this evening and to see all these wonderful people here and those who are watching online. Um, this time, I, I, you know, I'm sure they're happy that we're getting the streaming right. And quite a number of them are already logged on watching um, from their homes. Welcome to everybody here, those who are, people are here, it's such a beautiful um, environment, people are looking at the sea, it's nice and beautiful, the wind, you feel that nice breeze? Listen, we need to tell those in the house, you know, hot, hot in the house, come down, you know, sometimes you're home, in your house, you're so hot, tell them to come down, it's so, this is so beautiful, and you, want, you, know what, you know what is even more beautiful, some of you, I saw you yesterday. And I get to see your beautiful faces again today. And this is these committed people, the loyal, loyal opposition. And when we say the loyal opposition, we're not talking about a party. We're talking about the entire Barbados. It's all of Barbados, all of us. We make up the opposition. So, you know, um, I, I want to, I, I once again just want to say thank you all for coming and whatever you see here. Um, people came early, they decorated. It's us coming together. And when we come here tonight together, it's us working together to rebuild this country. Brick by brick, everybody coming together. People brought, some people came in, they brought the chairs. Some people loaned us um, these beautiful plants. You know, looking quite lovely. You know, we have John here helping with the, with the camera work and Jonathan and people are just volunteering, brick upon brick. We were here trying to struggle. How are we gonna fix these plants? And somebody who was dressed for the event got up and said, let me help you, I know how to do that. And we both looked at each other and we said, that's how we're gonna save our country, right? Can you wave at me? There he is, yes? And so we are working together brick by brick to build this country. And one of the things that we really want to say tonight is that we will not be silenced. We will not be silenced. We want to send a message loud and clear. Barbarians will not be silenced. We are told that in a couple of days, by the 14th, the plan is that they, they're planning that they're going to revisit the cybercrime bill. And this evening, we, 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 did you all listen to Brass Stacks today? How many of you listened to Brass Stacks? You realize that they're catching up, right? So we went out first and got all the hits and everything. You know, they beat us up, and now um, I'm grateful. I want to thank Anthony Green and um, the entire, um, the, all the hosts and those who called in, um, because they were saying what we're saying for the cybercrime bill. And we are saying to the government, take that back. Because we will not be silenced. So tonight, as we gather in this non-political, non-party, because, uh, you know, um, Rev, I'm thinking that a lot of times we don't understand that we can talk about political issues, but we don't have to be partisan. To be political and to be partisan, they're two different things. Politics, we're talking about how the country is governed, right? Governance of the country. Partisan is when you, you say, listen, I, I was born this 
and I'm going to I'm going to keep voting that way regardless. Even if my family is suffering, you know, even regardless of what is happening to me, regardless of the corruption, regardless of the lack of accountability, that's am I, I'm going to vote that way because that's that's what I know. Yeah, I'm going to line up. I'm going to line up behind the blue. I'm going to line up behind um behind red, I'm going to line up behind yellow or purple or whatever it is, regardless. That is what is partisan. And so we're, we're hoping that the education is getting through, that we can be political, we can talk about politics, and we don't have to be partisan. So tonight I see um, people are still coming in. Come right in and find, um, and find a seat and feel welcome this evening and let us have a great 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 evening of education mobilization agitation motivation okay god bless you all we love you bye bye thank you madam weeks thank you conrad weeks <laughs> That sounds strange, Conrad Weeks. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, it's really a joy to have you here with us this evening. And I'm so glad that Marcia spoke to the matter of politics and partisan. Because we are here about the political governance of this country. We have talked about transparency. We have talked about accountability down through the last several months. I had what I would say an un unexpected opportunity to be present at Kensington Oval yesterday because my grandson wanted to go to cricket and he insisted that I accompanied him and his mom and some of his friends and his sister and so I went and as I sat in that facility it's a lovely facility isn't it Kensington Oval is a lovely facility but as I sat there I looked around and I was exceptionally challenged to find $50 million in Kensington Oval. And I thought I was the only person. And I turned to a young man next to me and I just said, you know, I am finding it so hard to locate $50 million as I'm looking around. And to my surprise, he turned to me and said, that is the same thing myself and my two friends here were just talking about. We cannot see $50 million in Kensington Oval. There are no additional stands. There's a makeshift stand that they have off on one side. And listen, I hear that there was a comment that the place was jam-packed. Now, if I understand a place is jam-packed, it means standing room only. That is a blatant lie. I was there. There were empty seats in the bleachers, there were empty seats in the stands that I was in. The place was full, but it was not jam-packed. So don't let anybody fool you that it was jam-packed. So I sat there and I thought to myself, the government has to give the people of Barbados a account of $50 million for that facility. That is called transparency. That is called accountability. And if you borrowed the money to do it, you are not paying it back. The people of Barbados have to pay it back. And as the people who have to foot the bill, we are demanding to know how you spent it. What money was spent in lights? And I'm told that some $7 million was spent in something that did not come out of the $50 million that you borrowed. And I'm asking the question, if you spent $50 million, I ought to be able to see it. Folk, that's not $5, that's not 5000 it's not even 50000 you know it's $50 million? Huh? You have any idea what we could do with $50 million? And you spent it in a single facility and there are no brand new stands there is no, unless you dig up the whole ground and replace the ground but the ground look don't look no different than out here to me i don't know if you spent the 50 million dollars in australia and england because i played a good match yesterday but we ought to know 
if you if we're gonna have to pay for it we ought to know what we are paying for are you agreeing with me or not so don't come in 2024 talking rubbish to me as though you do not have a responsibility to give an account to the people this is not the 1960s this is not the 1970s this is not the 1980s it's not the 1990s this is 2024 and governance has got to change and we as the people of Barbados are demanding it we're not asking we implore you and I want the government to consistently remember if you know me for anything but nothing you're going to know me because I'm telling the government constantly we are your employers you are our employees and as a result you must give an account as to how you spend our money when you stood in the president's uh, home office or wherever it is house whatever you made a commitment to represent the people of this country you took an oath over the good book that's a serious act because the one that that good book speaks of doesn't take oaths as a joke he says it is better you do not make a vow than to make a vow and not keep it if you don't keep a vow that you make he says you are a fool so i am going to leave it for him to assess what the government is because if you give a solemn oath, and I think I heard a recording that they played yesterday as we were coming through the city, that if we were given a chance to govern this country, I give you my solemn promise. That word solemn is used regularly in religious sectors when you are standing at an altar committing yourself to somebody else. You all know what I'm talking about? The call of marriage. And you take a solemn oath when you do that. And so when you make that type of a statement as the people of this country, we are going to hold you to it. And we are going to demand accountability. Well, fortunately for you this evening, I'm just a moderator. And you don't have to hear my voice for the whole evening, thank God. We have a cadre of great speakers. I just received a message, one will be with us shortly but our first speaker is already here with us and I'm going to call on Mr. Victor Lewis to come and address you this evening. I want you to make Mr. Lewis feel welcome this evening. Come on, loyal opposition, let us make Mr. Lewis feel welcome and at home in this environment of the loyal opposition. And while he's coming, let me just say that we're going to have a segment in which you will be able to come and speak as well and tell us why you are always tuning in to the Marcy Week show. All right, so we look forward to hearing from you. Good evening, sir. Mr. Victor Lewis. Uh, good evening to everyone. I can't hear you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Beautiful. Now, I still want to congratulate. Um, Brother Hussein for taking five for 11. That was our representative for the West Indies. Give him a big round of applause. We must be able to commend our cricketers when they perform well. I would refer to yesterday from um, Mr. Lynch who really gave an evaluation of the session. And you know, it is very good when we can see individuals who do not mark their own scripts. But he, of course, in his analysis, said that there were some things that needed a bit of tweeting and that he will put in place. He looked at the whole idea of the transportation to and from Kesedon, and certainly he felt within himself that that area, those particular areas, needed a bit of adjustment. And we want to commend Brother Lynch for his work in the area of our T20 cricket. Give him also a, a big round of applause. We must be able to give credit where credit is due. Of course, when you see me here, you know that you will hear something as it relates to my parish, St. Joseph. Sometime over the course of this, of last week, a reporter called, sometime I think Thursday morning, or Friday morning 
and she wanted to know what is the position with the situation there with George River Bridge. I thought it was a rather interesting question. But one question she posed towards me is that, Mr. Lewis, are you going to go and get a new lawyer? Of course, you would have known by now that the lawyer that represented me no longer wishes me to be there because I joined this particular troop where truth abides. I know that when I come to the Mario Marcia Week show, that truth is always spoken. I know when I attended Joe's River with the whole issues there, I saw that truth did not abide. So I, of course I had to make a choice. Victor, what are you going to do? And you know the result from there, that Mr. Lewis is no longer represented in the course of Barbados with respect to that. But one thing we know as a people in Barbados, that the head of the Planning and Development Division decided to build walls and to build gates to block the people of Barbados out from Joseph Gully and from Teacup and Saucer. That is one thing that we know. I don't need a lawyer to tell me that. You don't need a lawyer to tell you that. And of course, we can appreciate that this issue is not yet resolved. It is a matter that was given a decision by planning and development and it is in contention now with the developers. And the developers said to me via WhatsApp that after this is completed, they're coming after me. I don't know why. I would want to say to you, as the loyal opposition, that these are matters that we must take some serious consideration to. I had to say to the report in question, I says, ma'am, I could listen to your voice and hear that you are a Bajan. And of course, if you are a Bajan, what is going on in the area of St. Joseph with also transfer in other places and this is a matter for the interests of Bajans and not Victor Lewis. The problem that occurred in the area of St. Joseph is not Victor Lewis's problem, but it's a problem for the people of Barbados. We must understand that the people of Barbados, that we have prescriptive rights in the course of this country to pass and repass to Joseph Gully and to pass and repass to take up and saucer. No one can stop us from doing that. So I want to say to them, I am no lawyer. The leader or the head of planning and division, who is the Prime Minister of Barbados, she's the lawyer. The constituency representative of St. Joseph, he is a lawyer. Let them solve that problem. That's not my problem. They took my name and used it in court to bring about an injunction to stop what they knew was wrong. And now my name is no longer there. I want to say to all the people of Barbados that we have prescriptive rights to access Joseph Gully or Teacup and Saucer. I would want to make it clear that my neighbor string will never, will never, never be silent or it will never have a price. I also heard that a philanthropist in the area of St. Joseph who lives somewhere in the area of Carawash 
was looking for me. But I want for you to tell him that Victor Lois's neighbor string don't have a price. And the philanthropists are those individuals who walk around with dollar bills looking to bribe you. Victor Lewis will not be bribed. When it's wrong, it's wrong. And of course we know that that's not the only project in the area of St. Joseph. We have another construction that's going on at the bottom of Cleveland Hill. And I saw there's a relationship between what is occurring there and what is occurring or has occurred in the area of George River. That bridge that you saw that was placed to give us access from Bashiba to Kalawash, that bridge was not a gift to the people of Barbados. That was designed in such a way to make us believe that we have access from Bashiba to Kalawash via this bridge while they blocked us out by walls and gates at the said bridge. When your morning words and evening words don't add up, something wrong. Whenever we drive through the area of St. Joseph now, if we can get a little water, if when we drive through the area of St. Joseph now, We do understand we do understand that we are seeing many burst pipes, deterioration of roads in the parts of St. Jordan because of the big, large trucks that are traversing those areas. I was coming from the beach on Wednesday morning up to his way, and I saw a massive abuse of water where a truck came down to the area. Pipes are burst. Water spouting in the air, and no one there to turn on or turn off, as the case may be. That's our water that we paid to put into the aquifers of this country that was there being wasted. understand that these are some challenges that we must confront head on. I know that there was an accident in the area of St. Lucie. A gentleman just 58 years old. And the allegations conveyed with that, there was an individual in question who was seeking to shun a hole in the road. And you know who that hole was caused by? The Barbados Water Authority. Many of them now we have in the area of St. Joseph. When you're climbing Cleaversill, you can come up at least three areas where there are large holes in the road at the top of Cleaversville. It's an accident 
waiting to happen. It's only a matter of time. When you're coming through St. Elizabeth Village, you also have some other large holes. You're also having some large holes. That is not in the best interest of the traveling public of this country. St. Elizabeth Village also poses for us an accident waiting to happen. When you go into the area of Hillsway, burst means in the area of Bashibo. Burst means in the area of his way. Burst means it not only challenges the safety of the traveling public, but it's also traveling, challenging the safety of our health. And of course, you know I'm from St. Joseph, so maybe my hoarseness is because of that dust that we are subjected to in the area of St. Joseph. Not only do we have problems in terms of the road, we also have problems in the terms of our utilities, electricity, internet. Every single week, we're in challenge with those particular amenities. We talk about the welcome stamp where individuals can come on board and enjoy working here in Barbados. Of course, we know that that is a challenge in St. Joseph because every single week, the power is off or internet is gone. I told Marcia that I wanted to come here today to talk to you concerning training of our children. And within the next five minutes, I want to be able to deliver on that. Proverbs 22 verse 5 says to us what? Train up a child in the way it should go. We have a responsibility as a people here in Barbados to train our children in the direction that they ought to go. But one area that I'm very, very concerned about, and I would want to caution you as a people, is that of a visual understanding where we learn based upon what we see and that is called a vicarious dimension of learning our anthem says to us the lord has been the people guide for past 300 years with him still on the people's side we have no doubt or fears god created male and female he did not create Adam and Eve as we know it and he created the as yes you're on the ball he created Adam and Eve, and not Adam and Steve. And whenever Eve want to cleave, she must find a Steve. I taught at the Allen School for some 28 years.
after teaching there, I went on to the United States. And I taught there in high school and middle school. And one day in middle school, this youngster came to me and said, I am transgender. I know that every day I mark the register at a school. I would mark F for females and M for males. I had to say with myself, Victor, what category are you going to put this individual in? That was my question. When I look at what is happening now in Barbados, when I saw what the IDB did in bringing our 11 year olds to subject them to a questionnaire that seeks to an an analyze their gender and their sexuality, I have to question myself. What is going on in Barbados? What gates are we going to continue to open? I had to say with myself that our society, the way we learn as a people, is currently being challenged and challenged significantly. We must understand as a people that any leadership within this country, their moral compass must be transparent and righteous. I know what occurred when there was challenges in Sodom and Gomorrah. What occurred there? was that all those individuals who were not righteous, when God removed his presence, they were destroyed. I want to say to the parents here this evening, now you would realize I'm having some several challenges with my voice. I want for you to understand that when we look at leadership leadership as we know it when you see Marcio Weeks you see Dave Weeks when you see Mr. Weeks you see Mrs. Weeks I want for you to understand that when we identify with leadership in our country we need models that our parents can follow. My question to you is, when you look at the moral fabric of the leadership of our country, what are you seeing? That is no surprise to me. What occurred with the IDB? It is no surprise to me when I see women being like women. But when we see the boys in our schools like women, something wrong. There is a creeping compromise that our society is now being subjected to. And whenever we look at leadership, we must be able to ask ourselves the question, what type of moral image is being projected to the children of Barbados? That question is a valid one and must be seriously considered. We cannot look upon leadership in this country, not now or not before. And give me one more minute. 
We're back. When Edutech started. $400 million was wasted by the same Prime Minister that is our Prime Minister today. Then she was the Minister of Education, but now she is the Prime Minister of Barbados. I'm saying that what occurred then will occur now. Edutech never got off the ground. It has been an abuse of funds and we still have an environment where funds will continue to be abused. My question to you, as parents, as mothers and fathers, it is not only the financial dimension of our country that we must pay allegiance to, that we must take some serious consideration to, but we must also consider the moral fabric of our country and to what extent we are being led in the right direction. I thank you very much. Come on, let's hear from Mr. Lewis this evening. In spite of his vocal challenges, we want to thank him for taking the time to come and share with us this evening. Let me just say, our Attorney General, Mr. Lewis, was elected as the representative for St. Joseph. Is that right? That is his primary responsibility. His secondary responsibility is Attorney General. His primary response, because if he was not elected, he won't be Attorney General. Because he won't be in Parliament and he won't be in Cabinet. So his primary responsibility is an elected official of this country. His secondary one is the Attorney General. And I am disappointed that he would take the side of the government in the matter to do with Joe's River rather than represent the people who elected him to represent them in Parliament. And I make no apologies for it. I have said on several occasions that we have a government that globe trots around the world representing the former colonial masters of this country. Speaking on European Union platforms, speaking on World Health Organization platforms, speaking on International Monetary Fund platforms, but not speaking on one African platform. There's a reason Africa doesn't have her speak there. We were told that we were supposed to be going back to our ancestral roots. But my ancestral roots do not lie in Europe. They do not lie in the United States. They do not lie in the United Kingdom. You are supposed to be representing the people of this country, not the global interests of an agenda of international agencies that couldn't give two farthings about the people of this country. Do you think the International Monetary Fund is interested in any hardships Barbadians go through? Do you think that they're interested in how much you gotta pay for a tennis party? Is that popular? They couldn't care less. As long as you get what they want done because you are borrowing money from them, that is the only thing they're interested in. Because the good book never lies. The borrower is servant to the lender. It's so no wonder we are seeing so many strange things represent themselves in Barbados, including something called a cyber crime bill. If this cyber crime bill passes, this meeting will only be face to face. This will not be able to be aired on YouTube, Facebook, or any other social media platform. And we have seen what has happened in countries where a similar type of crime, cyber crime bill has been implemented. And as Mrs. Weeks said this evening, we are not afraid and we will not be silenced. I think I heard her say yesterday, whether we philosophically agree or not. Politically, the voice of the people 
is the voice of God. So the government better start listening. Because when he talks and you don't listen, he usually acts. And I have said it before and I will say it again. He does not need an election to remove a government. Don't tell me I am inciting anything. If I incite anything, I incite from upstairs. And you will have to deal with him. You can't deal with me because all I am is an ambassador. I can only tell you what my government's policy is. And his policy is, when the people groan, the wicked rule. And when they rejoice, the righteous rule. So you can determine who is ruling. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker, I must say, I am, I am I'm in an unusual position. Because I've had to rub shoulders with so many different people of all walks of life. But I find there is one common thread that binds us together. And that common thread is that we are citizens of the country of Barbados. I do not care whether you are Barbados Labour Party, that is irrelevant. I do not care if you're Democratic Labour Party, that too is irrelevant. I have no interest in whether you are Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, Rasta, Christian or otherwise, if you are a citizen of this country and what is happening here is affecting us. We all need to rally together in order to correct what is happening. I was recently on a platform and the person talked about repairing the breach. Our sovereignty has been breached from the day our flag was carried into Ghana, Uganda, or wherever it was carried, and lured into a hole, whether it went in and stayed, or went in and came back out. A sovereign symbol does not touch the ground. This flag cannot be touched the ground when you're luring it from the flagpole. And as the Prime Minister of this country, you ought to have known that. If we do that, we, 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 we desecrate, as it were, the sovereign symbol of this country. And as the Prime Minister, the last thing you should have done is allow that flight to go into any hole, especially in Africa, where those people do not take their religion as a joke. And I believe firmly that a lot of Bajans are under a spell a spell that with God's help we are going to break. We are going to break that spell. This ain't not Auntie Mia. My aunts have all died. Not Auntie. All of them. But I'm very glad to have been able to rub shoulders with so many different persons. And our next speaker is one such person. He is president of a charity called the African Heritage Foundation that helps any African grouping. He's a younger elder in the Rastafarian community and a part of the reformation of the cannabis laws. He's advocating for that. And I discovered rather interestingly as well, he's the son of a Christian minister. How many of you all remember Leonard Rock? Many of you remember that Leonard? And I want to welcome to speak to us this evening the uh, uh, most said the right honorable but Mr. Ras Simba would you put your hands together please and welcome Ras Simba to speak to us this evening mm -hmm. everybody who need a child uh -huh. everybody who need to live together this would make the world a better place this evening Give thanks, give thanks. Blessings on the day. Greetings, greetings to everyone. I must say, give thanks, Marcia, for having me. You know, give thanks for everyone for coming out. You have to raise the mic, I'm not the. I don't have the biggest voice, so I give thanks to the loyal opposition. I give thanks to the people for coming out. Yeah. You know, yeah. You need to really give yourselves a, a, a round of applause. This is not an easy time. Before I left home, I was listening to one of a new reggae artists, you know, and he's, he's saying that 
just because they're black it doesn't mean that they were better that they're better than the old slave masters just because they're black it doesn't mean that they're better than the old slave masters they've removed the chains but they whip us a little harder to understand our position we have to understand the essence of our people and it's about our people african descended people you don't see indian people here you don't see white people here yeah. they're doing all right we as a people are the people that are being affected african descended people generations of us to come are being affected and will be affected by what we do or what we do not do in this time whether we stand up or whether we sit down yeah. i don't know if many of you know the name marcus messiah garvey marcus garvey said that they gave leadership to our people and in turn our people made us slaves and that is the issue that we are facing today an issue of self-destruction we are our worst own enemies from independence to now i'm not old enough to talk about in the 60s but certainly from the time i was of age to understand myself i understood that we have been put in a position of modern slavery i always say that we operate under the the three s's first it was servitude if you understand your history and when servitude didn't work we went into full-blown slavery when slavery was no longer prudent it was turned into industry called service the service industry and once you think about it how many people of other races do we see doing what we call menial jobs in our main industry which is the hotel industry how many white maids do you see how many white brown people do you see understand that the system of apartheid was perfected in barbados before it left for the shores of south africa you have to know your history barbados operates under what we call a perfect system of apartheid if you understand what slavery was or what slavery is it was an economic venture it wasn't because one race didn't like another race and we just went to beat us up and make things hard it was an economic venture how do we get a people to make money for us in the beginning they had to beat us to work now we work freely <laughs> we do it with smiles on our face because we don't understand the last time i spoke here on this platform i asked the question what does a barbadian government look like since then I've been doing my own little survey asking people in your mind what does a Barbadian government look like and for those who weren't there when I spoke I said there was a man called Stokely Carmichael I believe it was him that said he had traveled to the length and breadth of Africa and he saw many African people in government but he was yet to see an African government and that was in the 60s and I put it to those gathered that we have seen many barbadians in government but we are yet to see a barbadian government and what would a barbadian government look like i asked my partner my queen my most trusted advisor what 
but the Barbadian government look like to you? And her answer was one where we do not have to beg for the changes that we want from our representatives. It seems that we, if we want something done, we have to put them on blast, put them in the media. I'll give you an example of this. I think it was the last parliament I wanted to come. I think it was, that was the first parliament that was going to be held, or the second, I wanted to come. And as I was outside by the gate, at my house speaking to a family member, I heard this big crash and dust all over the place. And this big mahogany tree came down. I know you would have seen it in the papers the next day, the Sunday morning with a lady pointing, right? That's my queen. And she had told the nation that for over the better part of 10 years, they were telling the NHC about this tree and the dangers of this tree. Now the tree has come down, half the tree came down. Thank goodness nobody was hurt. A couple of people's you know, property got damaged. But then I listened on the radio to Minister Humphrey. And Minister Humphrey said that we need to take an assessment of all the trees that need to come down. Can you believe it? People now tell you for 10 years we complained about this thing to a government department and what you're going to say is that we need to take an assessment of the trees that need to come down. Not of the the lack of work and you know the tardiness you know and why was nothing done about this tree heads should be rolling nothing like that and you know what causes that a word called nepotism i let my friends go in people that support me i think whatever they do or whatever they do not do is fine and that has been the role of the BLP and the DLP back and forth. A Barbadian government is a government that understands that they are representatives of the people and they serve the people. How are you better off than the people when you are serving the people? We don't see poor politicians. But politicians are the first ones to come and say, oh, we're looking at um, poverty alleviation. And what we need to do is find more jobs, job creation. And every time I hear that, my skin crawls. Because I said most people that I know, most poor people that I know have jobs. I work very hard, sometimes two or three jobs. So finding a job could not be the answer to poverty, poverty alleviation. Common sense could tell you that. I have seen my grandmother work her whole life and there is a poor woman. She worked in Harrison's, for those who can remember what Harrison's was. <laughs> you know? So I'm saying that there needs to be a better way. A Barbadian government needs vision. And for the better part, of 1966 till now, we see two parties fighting against one another for the opportunity, in my estimation, to get in office to rob the people. That is all I see happening. From one to the next, the BLP and the DLP are one government, don't fool yourself. And the only thing that they have produced is more separation for the people. Right now we're in a time where the middle class is a class I call the credit class because they're living on bare loans and bare credit. We have a government with no vision. We borrow money to do what we need to do and then we borrow money to pay it back. 
and then we borrow more money to pay that back and we continue so and you know this, the saying that goes he who pays the piper calls the tune so barbarian people are not calling our tunes our tunes are being called for us and all we do as good little sheep is listen to the promises and the lies of two political parties that are jockeying themselves to take advantage of the people I put it to you, if people really cared about doing something for the betterment, what do they do? They come together. They unite. Unity is the strongest force, force that we have. And if these people, these people that assert themselves as politicians, really not our representatives, really cared about Barbados and Barbadians, they would have united a long time ago. But we know how it goes. One party comes in, they implement something else. Another party comes in, they take that out. And what happens? There's no progress for the people. There's wastes of money. And then what they do? They add on more tax for us to pay. And somehow, somehow, we're expected to find it. The other day, at, I was reading, you know, when they had the, the parties had the picnics. The BLP gave away money. I don't know what the DLP gave away. Well, that's very good. But they have nothing to give. They both have nothing to give. But I, I looked at it in the paper, you know, and I was seeing, and I was hearing the Prime Minister saying that we're almost there. And I had to ask myself, almost where? Where are we actually going? Where is our destination? And if we almost close to our destination and this is the state of the people, it seems like hell is where we're heading. It seems like hell is where we are heading. We have a situation where both governments have paid lip service and you heard Mr. Lynch talk about EduTech and then talk about the recent failures of our education department our education, you know, the ministry and we have a case, you know, we, the, you know you've spoken about it here about the, the, the illiteracy in Barbados the non-functioning illiterate and the functioning illiterate because I want you to know that they are the functioning illiterate. People that can read and write and are just as stupid as people that can't read and write. And I want to say that people that can't read and write are not necessarily stupid. I want to take that back. But I'm saying that they are not informed and they do not take the time to inform themselves to deal with the issues. Look at how we are here now. Believe you me, if we had some little entertainment and uh, alcohol given away and things, we would see more people. That all food, and that shows you the state, the mindset of our people, and that is directly linked to a lack of governance, a lack of good positive government by both the BLP and the DLP so I ask again think about it what would a Barbadian government look like a true Barbadian government now we have a, a, a system we've gone into being a republic with colonial mechanisms our whole system of governance, the Westminster system of government that we use, 
is directly an import from our colonial experience. And we have not seen it fit to address that. We have many laws still on the books from that time. I said before, our parliament, not this parliament, and we have to be careful in this parliament because this structure doesn't even look too good. <laughs> is the second oldest parliament in the world and we seem to be proud of that but that was the place that made us less than human that was the place that upheld the law of slavery because remember slavery was a law and there are many of us who cannot see beyond blp dlp and if we understand, and if we know our history, we would know about a woman called Harriet Tubman. They call her the Black Moses. She ran in the height of slavery, an underground railroad. And Harriet Tubman said that she would have saved many more people, many more slaves, if she could have convinced them that they were slaves. And this was in the time of shackle and chain slavery. Can you imagine that? So I want you to task yourselves with, with thinking beyond the politics and the politicians that we have grown accustomed to to think beyond the abuse that we have been subjected to. Now we've heard that I am a champion of sorts for cannabis. I'm a raster man. What do you expect? On Tuesday, I go to court. Have you heard me say? To represent my human and my constitutional rights as a citizen of Barbados who should be free to practice my religion, my spirituality, to observe it freely without interference from the state. When challenged at a joint select committee meeting, I challenged the Attorney General and he said that they were going to pass this they were looking at passing a, a, a medical marijuana bill, strictly for medicine. And sacramental and recreational use, which he lumped together, will be looked at later. And I said that you cannot lump the sacrament and recreational together and our good attorney general stood up and he asked me he said mr rock please explain to me the difference between recreational and sacramental i took that as very offensive i said mr marshall People go to parties like Blakey's and places like Blakey's to enjoy themselves, have a good time, have a good drink and, you know, enjoy themselves. People go to their places of worship to praise the Lord, praise their deity, whoever they worship. Within doing that, they will enjoy themselves. But if you're going to church just to enjoy yourself, I put it to you, you're going for the wrong reason. He had nothing to say, so he sat down. He proceeded to pass an act, and I watched Palam. Ministers get up and talk about, one minister got up and talk about, oh, he remembers as a, a young man, trolling with the rasters in the pine, again, offensive. Because you're going to bring a bill that disregards my home as a place of worship strictly because I am Rastafari 
and I belong to the category of what I call the three R's in Barbados. They're rats, they're roaches, and they're rasters. Very serious. And while we have seemingly great, made great strides to integrate those on the, on the fringes of our society like myself, we've gone really nowhere. We've really gone nowhere. And on Tuesday, I go after four years of going to court, I shall happily finally have my day in court where I'm going to stand up against three Queen's councils and another magistrate the government has brought four of the big dogs for me you gotta bring enough dogs for one land <laughs> but on Tuesday I'll be there representing my community and I've told you before more than that I'm representing our constitutional rights and our right to have our constitutional and human rights respected. So if you're think, sitting there and thinking, oh, this is about ganja, it's about cannabis, it's about drugs, and no. Today, it is me. Now you all face it with this cybercrime bill. Our constitutional rights. If you can do it to one, you can do it to any. And I want to end just as I started with a quote. Now, I grew up in Trinidad. I was born in Grenada. But as you heard, my father was a Methodist minister. And it was the policy of that church to move every five years. So I was born in one place. I was moved to another place. Around and around. And I finally ended up here. But I lived in Trinidad the longest. So I consider Trinidad my home. And in the words of a Trinidadian calypso called Bali, in a song called Shaka, he says he's speaking about the revolution and the spirit of Shaka Zulu, that great South African warrior. And we do need a revolution. I'm not gonna call it a coup. Officers, it's not a coup. But we do need a revolution. A revolution of conscience. And Bali says, Shaka Shaka, if you touch my brother, tell them, tell them, you have to hit all of you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Marcia. Enjoy your night. Thank you, my brother. Can we hear it, please? Put your hands together for us, Simba. Come on. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing with us tonight. We are all Barbadians, eh? Oh, I said we are all Barbadians. No labor rights, no dams, Barbadians. We became a republic when it was again there in 22. But we still run in by a colonial government. We should change that quick and become something different. Where is the Constitution? Where is the Republic Constitution? Another subject for another time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the time where we give you the opportunity to come and share your thoughts. We are members of the loyal opposition and it is a, conrad of, a, con a gathering of all of us. And we know there are things you have to say as well. And we welcome you hearing from you. Even on the show, you know, I don't know how many of you realize it, but even when I am not on the show, I am monitoring all that chat. Boy, and I got a lot of chat lists come down through that show. <laughs> all right. And here's your chance to be able to actually physically articulate your chat so if you will wish to do that just come right forward Mars is here waiting on you if you come forward for no other reason than to meet her come forward quick and move fast so that you can she can bring you up 
and we can hear from you this evening. So come on, come on, let's hear from the people. Let's hear from the people. It is said the people, the voice of the people is what? The voice of the people is what? The voice of the people is what? So let's hear the voice of God this evening, all right? So make your way to Marcia, and she will just bring you on up, direct you up, and we hear from you. Come on. And just, just give us your first name. Uh, we, don't, we don't want to expose you too much, so just your first name. Because we don't want to make it a list. Yeah, I'm checking it twice. Blessing, good night to all. My name is Paul. One of the things that I believe we should be more concerned about is who we associate ourselves with. One person, a leader, said to another leader, using the term despot. I checked the meaning of despot and it speaks of some person who is a tyrant. Now, our dictator, now they have knowledge of that person, not me. So I am telling you that that person said to that person that they are a despot, a tyrant. Now there's a word that I saw in the scriptures, Romans 1.28. And it speaks of being a reprobate. And a reprobate means an unprincipled person. And I'm saying to us tonight that we have to be careful of who we associate ourselves with. You know what it means to have a principle and then being unprincipled? For instance, having a principle. Imagine having a gathering like this or planning a gathering like this. And without any coercement, the organizer tells the donors how the money was spent in detail. That person has principle, has character. But when you subject our children to an illegal examination, without even informing the parents, that shows you have no principle. And then when you turn around again and give our children a drill unknown to them, traumatizing them, that shows you have no principle. When you get behind closed doors and make rules and laws against the people without their intervention, that shows you have no principle. That speaks of reprobate. I did not say it, the scriptures say it. So if you have any quarrel with me, talk to the scriptures. Talk to God. In closing, I just want us to remember, don't get tied up with numbers. You may be thinking that the majority is 29 to 1. But when the 29 get together and make their own plans and the majority change the plans, you would know who the majority is. We no longer have to deal with the IDs because the majority spoke. Do not get tied up with numbers. Thank you very much. Hello, good night. My name is Cameron. Why I want to say, right? How can you take someone serious who have made Rihanna a national hero? Tell me something. You all know who Rihanna really is though? How Rihanna could be a national hero of Barbados? Tell me. Huh? I can't believe that people accept that. That's unacceptable. 
And what I'm saying to you right now, um, what I'm saying to you right now, you want Ralph Thorne. If he became come successful in any election in Barbados, I want you to rescind that, take it out. But Rihanna is not my national hero. Yeah? You all saw her on Facebook about two weeks ago. Half naked. And that is a Barbados national hero. And what we what we what we need to do is to check our health system. A lot of people in Barbados right now are suffering and need attention, especially with cataract. Right? And what, what are the hospitals doing? What are they doing? Tell you come back next two years. And next man come back, man come back now you're blind. Huh? You go back for cataract and then tell you come back next year. You know? The dental system is down. Right now you know people that went to, went to get the, the teeth fixed at the, 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 the polyclinic below Purely Bakeries. And every time you go there, every time you go to go the polyclinic, they tell you come back. The, 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 the equipment ain't working, right? And, and, and what they are doing, they are, they are sending people at, uh, at a dental clinic to get X-rays. If you want X-ray, they, they, they're giving you a piece of paper and tell you go in Belleville at this at this uh, this dental clinic to get X-ray. Uh, we, we need to get our systems working again so so Bajans can uh, let me return to our, how our health system used to be in the past all right that's what we need because a lot of people in Barbados are suffering from health issues and there's no help the bus system is down to if you listen to if you listen to brass that's I think it was Friday a lady, a lady said that she works at the, uh, she she works at the defense force. And you imagine the woman, the woman was supposed to to, to work to to go on. I think uh, I think it's one o'clock, and the bus that she was waiting for came at, uh, after four o'clock. Huh? So what was that telling you that this, this this government is running the country well? Huh? The people in Barbados are suffering for attention. I don't know, we need attention. But, but most of all, what, what, I'm, what I'm saying to you all, the cybercrime bill is something that we need to get rid of as well. Because that is hampering democracy. Right? And we don't need that. Huh? <laughs> Right, we, that's what we need. All right, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come here this evening as the roadside parliament of the loyal opposition of Barbados. We are grateful that we now have an official opposition in the House of Assembly. We are grateful that Mr. Thorne has stepped forward to restore the level of democracy within our parliament and the governance of our country. He speaks our language. He says what we say. He agrees with what we are saying. And we are grateful that the people of Barbados now have a voice in the House of Assembly. But I'm happy to tell you this evening that voices of the people are not just in the House of Assembly, but they are out here in the People's Parliament. Your voices and the voices that still represent this country. Our next speaker was leader of one of the political opposition parties of Barbados that I ran with and for in 2022. Anybody who knows anything about my history 
will tell you something has to be very, very wrong for me to change sides. But when things are not what they used to be, and when principle, integrity, transparency, and accountability are at risk, there comes a time when a man has to make a choice. And that choice must be made on the side of integrity, honesty, accountability, and transparency. And that is what the people of this country have chosen to do and is represented here this evening in this roadside parliament. So our next speaker that comes is a reverend just like me. And I want you to know that he is as committed to his country now as he was then. He has never stopped being a Bajan. He is a Barbadian. And while you may not have heard his voice as often as you should, you're going to hear it this evening. And you will discover that his convictions and his commitment to this country have not changed. I speak of the Reverend Joseph Adderley, and I ask you to welcome him this evening to our stage to speak on behalf of the people of Barbados. I like that music. It is Sunday night. I would normally be found in church trying to instruct people at this hour. So that type of music is familiar to me. I identify with the truth. God is fighting for us. And God is on our side. He has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be I thank you for having me here tonight to lend your ears to what I have to say. I appreciate mercy of the invitation that comes from you and Ferdy and the team. Always, 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 I am ready and prepared to open my mouth and to express the sentiments of my heart in the interests of Barbados notwithstanding who is bothered by that who is upset by that who would want to respond to that in negative and dark ways and i'm glad for the opportunity to be here and to share with us tonight just for a few minutes and thank you for having me governance is a critical component, an element in the pursuit and practice of a healthy democracy. Good governance is critical to the pursuit and practice of healthy democratic structures and systems. An opposition presence, opposition power, and I'm very careful to say that. Opposition presence is vital. If there is to be good governance, if there is to be healthy democratic practice. But opposition power is also critical. There are those who would want to suggest that the government of the day, of any day, and I'm not just talking about this government and this day, the government of the day is the government, that's it, end of it all. A good governance culture requires that there be a healthy opposition presence and a good dose of opposition power which is recognized and respected. Those in Barbados who would not have us to have an opposition 
with a healthy presence, properly recognized, and endowed with some measure, a healthy dose of power, do not operate in the interests of Barbados. Those who are in the corridors of government, of parliament, and who are blind to the fact, who are blind to the fact that it is not in the interest of Barbados to have this type of one party dominance, which we are now practicing, they are in fact very blinded. God surprise me up. I applaud Ralph Thorne yeah. for the decision he took to cross the floor and to give effect to some form of opposition structure and presence in the parliament and in the public domain of Barbados. I hope he gets it right. I'm not getting into Democratic Labour Party business. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about his having the courage to get up one day and to cross the floor well knowing that as you pursue the interests of Barbados, it is likely that your own personal interests will not be best served. And so you're willing to make the sacrifice and to take the step that others around you are not prepared to take because they are primarily, principally so, concerned about personal advancement, personal privilege, and personal interests. If you are interested in Barbados, you cannot sit down in a one-party dominant culture and context and, 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 and not recognize that it needs to be given vent, expression, exposure to opposition opinion, opposition presence, and opposition power. Now, when I cross the floor, and I have to tell you that technically, this is not the point, but just in passing, I have to tell you that technically, I do not cross the floor. When I move from one side of the parliamentary structure in Barbados, so to speak, to the other, parliament had not yet been convened. So theoretically and technically, Joseph Adley never crossed the floor. I made the step before parliament was convened. But that's a debate for those who are interested in political fear rising, and so forth. The point I want to make, and to use their language, when I crossed the floor, they said he was a good for nothing. He was not to be trusted. He has done it for money. I never asked any one of them for a cent, before nor since. And this is what they said, and some Barbadians believe that. And I have to tell you that I meet many of them now on a daily basis who shout me out and who come up to me and say, Now I understand why you did what you did. Tell me if this sounds to you like a man who is motivated by money. Do you know that if I took my position on the back bench, of the then parliamentary system under the label of the Barbados Labour Party, so to speak, I would have been given a parliamentary salary. Do you know that if I had taken that parliamentary salary, I would still have been able to work at a job? A minister can't or shouldn't, but a backbencher can. And do you know if I had taken the job and taken the parliamentary salary at the same time, what I would have been earning as income would have exceeded what they were paying to the leader of the opposition? I would have to be foolish if I were pursuing money to take that option and sit as leader of the opposition with the meager remuneration and oftentimes had to pull my own pocket to meet the needs of the opposition office in Barbados. Because that's something that needs to be examined. Tell me if that sounds to you like a man that's motivated by a desire for money. I have always worked in my entire life. I have been leading a church for a few decades. And even when I was in Parliament, I continued to do that on a daily and weekly basis. And I've always said to the church, 
I do not want a cent in salary. There are few church members here and they ask them. I have never accepted a cent in salary from the church for all of these decades. Some of you may not know, but I also head our church in the region and I've been doing that for about 12 years now. And they voted me back all the time. And that position provides for an allowance for the regional bishop, the regional head. And I've never taken a cent. Never asked them to give it to me. Because I've always worked. My wife has always worked. And I felt that we did not have to depend upon the pockets of poor people to survive. And so I didn't take a cent. I lead a church which does not take a cent for any service it offers to the public. So when they come for their weddings and they ask me, Pastor, what do we have to pay? Oh, we don't charge people. When they come for the funerals and they, how much do we have to pay for the services of the church? No, we don't charge for that. We have never charged a cent. And there are one or two of them who have been critical of me and pushing this view that he did what he did for money who have come to our church and benefited from our services and Joseph actually never charged them a cent. A song to the command that is interested in money. Motivated by money. But I said that to say this. I hope Ralph Thorne can get it right in the interest of Barbados. And that is not a statement with reference to anything that is happening in the Democratic Labour Party. I am talking about the institution of the leader of the opposition. So an opposition must be afforded presence. I believe an opposition must be afforded power to do the job that it has to do in the interest of healthy democratic development in places like Barbados. Good government, good governance is critical to healthy democratic practice. Let's look at a few things very briefly. If we are to sustain a climate of social calm in Barbados, good governance is critical a part of that good government or good governance is the opposition, is the uh, acceptance, acknowledgement, the embrace even of opposition position, opposition sentiment. Barbados has gone through in the past historically periods of time when there was struggle and that struggle has led to violence. Those who would want to suggest that those voices which are raised in opposition to any policy of government which is taught not to be in the wider interests of Barbados, that those voices might be, must be silenced, that that opposition presence must be shut aside, that their activities must be frustrated, that their leaders must be persecuted or threatened, do not operate in the interests of Barbados. If we are to see social calm maintained, exercises like this must not only be properly, fully allowed, they must be supported by all who operate in the interests of Barbados. We have a problem with some deterioration in the social fabric, principally because of crime and drugs and gang activity. And it makes us uncomfortable. We don't feel safe even in our own homes. That represents a social deterioration of the climate in Barbados in recent years. And I'm suggesting that if we do not appreciate that it is in the interest of our country to allow, and even if we do not uh, think that we ought to encourage it, we certainly should do nothing to frustrate it, to put impediments in the way. But an opposition voice, an opposition presence must be permitted. An opposition power has to be accommodated if Barbados is to be the country which I hope we all would like to see it be. 
We can't stifle opinions. We can't bring legislation that will force people to back away from making their voice and message known through social media. And I'm not saying that we should be wild about what we do in terms of what we say about others. But I'm saying you cannot bring the kind of legislation phrase and worded in such a way as that people feel intimidated that they cannot say what they feel strongly to be in the interests of Barbados. There are things said about us in the in the in the social media, especially sometimes. I, I just met an individual just before I came on here. And she said to me, How is Sabrina? I said, which one? Which one? I know about two or three Sabrinas. Which one are you talking about? The one that had the trouble that you went to court with. I said, I don't know that young lady. Because I don't know her. As far as I know, she's no relative of mine. I never went to court and sat down with her. But that was in the social media print. That she is Joseph Athley's sister, or was it daughter? And that he attended court with her today. And because he attended court with her today, you know what the outcome of this thing will be. And pretty soon you will hear nothing more about it. Listen, I don't know the lady from Eve. The point I am making is that we must perhaps make the effort to protect people's integrity, people's reputation, by making sure that the regulatory frame within which we operate is such that people are not harmed willy-nilly by what mischievous people decide to say or write. But at the same time, you cannot so phrase and bring legislation that will so intimidate people that if they see something wrong in Barbados, they don't feel that they can say something is wrong. And that is the role of the opposition. Sometimes, the media sector is so influenced by the governors of the day that we cannot fully rely on the media to properly put the message out. And so groups like this, and people like Marcia Weeks and Ferdinand Nichols and Caswell Franklin must tell the people of Barbados, look, you have heard this said and you've heard this said, but listen, this is the truth. We have to have that. If we are to have a healthy democratic culture and practice in Barbados, if we are to ensure that social calm obtains, the issue of good governments becomes critical. Even with respect to our economic activities. Look, through the system of government and governance under which we operate, the limited resources which we have as small pocket nations must be wisely, prudently, and properly, appropriately used. If our resources are limited and scarce, think of your own pockets. Hello? If your pockets are fragile or frail, if your pockets find themselves subject to weakness. You can't do this for everybody. You can't do that for everybody. So you begin to discriminate because you must. And if I have $10 and there are three people waiting to be served by that $10, I must either divide that $10 between the three, among the three, as evenly as possible, or I must give one and leave out the other two, or give two and leave out the other one. That is said to you to be illustrative of the fact tonight, Barbados has limited resources. The question then becomes, how do we distribute those limited resources among the masses of the people? In a healthy democracy, with healthy systems of governance, it helps us to better get the task done of distributing scarce resources to the majority of people in Barbados. If we don't, what obtains in Barbados tonight, what has obtained traditionally and historically in Barbados will continue to, up, to obtain. And that is that select interests will benefit select interests, the chosen few, whether they are in the business and, and, and financial sector, 
whether they are political party supporters, wants the pool of funds out of which a government operates is a limited pool, then the government will decide by a process of some form of discrimination who will benefit. In our history, it has been those who are the economic, the entrenched economic interests in Barbados. In other words, those who have are getting more, and those who have not are not being sufficiently resourced and benefited out of limited funds. A good governance structure in a maturing and developing democracy puts us in a better position to service the needs of those who depend upon the public purse. If we don't do that, whose interests are most served? Whose interests are most prominent? Who gets the first call? Hello, if it's a small contractor, he's up against the big contractors. Who gets the job? The big contractors. Because at the end of the day, in a system of government or governance that is not healthy, decisions will be made on the basis of what can best benefit this government and what can best benefit this party. And I'm not talking about B or D or Green Party or any other party. I'm speaking about principles. And therefore, if we are to be best served, that is our economic interests, so that the working class and the majority in Barbados can wake up every morning with hope in their breasts that somehow I will be blessed by the system. If we don't do that, it will not happen. What will continue to happen is that those who already have will get more because they are in a position to give back to those who have given to them in the first place. So whether it's social cam, two minutes, three minutes, whether it's, so, yeah, don't just know. whether it's social cam or the economy, whether it is political development, we have to properly engage the political process. In the political process, we can talk about the voting process. In a healthy democracy, the voting process is a process that is improving. In the Barbados situation right now, our process of voting is not improving. It is deteriorating. And that's a fact. You know how many people went to the polls last time and the times before that? We got to deal. If you want to see proper political development, in terms of the processes by which we are governed, you have got to have a proper system of governance underpinning that democracy. Institutions must have integrity. That is the justice institutions, the courts. There must be integrity attaching to that. You cannot have a situation where appointments to any judicial mechanism become subject to those who are the powers that be of the day. And you can set up a commission to make recommendations on people to be appointed, but if you have set up that commission, you then still have power over the members of that commission to get most of them to do what you want to see done. So when it comes to institute, our institutions are deficient in too many ways. They are dysfunctional in too many ways. And if our governance system to, is to improve so that our democratic practice might be improved, we've got to treat to our institutions. Let me quickly say this. One of the principal institutions when it comes to proper governance and accountability is the Public Accounts Committee. That's public right. Accounts That's Committee right. is led and chaired by the leader of the opposition. But it is a deficient system, I must tell you, because I know I have been there. You see, the government has the majority of members. On the, the chairman might be the leader of the opposition, but he brings with him or her two persons. No, one person comes with him. Two come from the independent senators. All the others come from the government. You know what can happen there? They determine when you meet. They determine what will be the focus of the quorum. They determine who you could call to, 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 to make accountable of their actions. Public Accounts Committee is a defective, deficient system in Barbados. It may be well intended, and I'm sure Mr. Ralph Thorn is well intentioned when he talks about activating it. But the numbers of the members of the government are so strong, they can influence where you meet, when you meet, what issues you look at, who you call to testify before the committee, who you can't call. And that is a fact. And we've got to address deficiency and done and defects in our institutional system if our governance structure is to be improved and our system of governance improved.
the Auditor General does a fantastic job in Barbados, puts his finger on the pulse of what is going wrong in public service entities in Barbados. What becomes of those reports? How protected is he from being carried to court for something he has said? MPs, parliamentarians can stand up in parliament and say what they want about you and nothing befalls them. The Public Accounts Committee chairperson, the, 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 the Auditor General must be in a position to give opinion based on evidence without a sense of intimidation that he will find himself in trouble. He should be able to recommend prosecution to the DPP, Director of Public Prosecution. I take an amendment was made to facilitate that. If that is true, it is good. And all I'm saying here tonight is this. If we are going to have a healthy democracy, a system of government, governance, which itself is healthy and maturing, is critical. And it affects every aspect of our lives. Whether it's social, political, institutional, economic, and the institutions which we have, we've got to make sure that they improve so they can serve the interests of Barbados. I thank you for allowing me to come and say a few going boy get me going I ain't a calypsonian boy but let me tell you I like music get me going I'll sing for the rest of the night <laughs> ladies and gentlemen put your hands together for Reverend Joseph Anthony please great 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 presentation tonight and Reverend Anthony I want to assure you that we are going to hold Mr. Thorne to account to don't doubt that for a minute. And the Public Accounts Committee is going to be transparent. The people will be watching. He has committed to public appearances. The cameras will be there. We will know. And we will know who they are and what they're getting on with. Politics in Barbados must change. We are done with this rubbish. No more games. Don't get in Parliament talking crap and behaving like little children. Do the people's business and stop acting like a child. The Apostle Paul says, when I was a child, I behaved like a child. I spoke like a child. But when I became a man, I put all childish things. All we can see in Parliament is a bunch of children who don't know how to discuss and debate. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Before I bring on our next speaker, I'm going to give you a brief moment. I understand there are one or two of you that have something to say. So make your way here quickly, please. Come, come, come. Whoever you are. Whoever you are. Listen, I like an auctioneer. Whoever you are going once. Whoever you are going twice. Whoever you are going three times. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, what's going on now in Barbados? Do not be fooled by this government. The Prime Minister is working politics on you all. Check all states and check Kensington. You all need to. Hello? You all need to stop. Um, you all need to get your act, your act together. Don't wait till election time and avoid her back in. You all need to talk about the issues of what going on in Barbados. There are too many issues. First of all, this Cayman Island airline. The government is too silent on this. We, we the taxpayers of Barbados, need to know what is how much money is being paid to in that airline for those empty seats. 
Pardon? Yeah, she's keeping silent on that and nobody, she, nobody's not telling us nothing about it. But we need to know what is going on with that Cayman airline flight. And another thing with this hospital, so many things going on at that hospital. Nothing has changed at that hospital. You're going in there, you're spending, um, you're going there in night time and you have to go, um, go home the next day, you're staying, you're sleeping in there. But you know they're coming over last week, Mo, the kind of so different things are coming, even the, uh, the specialist, he come and tell you all kind of sweet things, just to fool you. People need to go down there and see what is going on. But anyhow, you all need to you all need to stick with Ralph Thorn. Definitely need to get the act together. We cannot afford to um, go back in this government. She. This prime minister play politics for your own money. You think that because she said she play politics for your own money, but y'all don't know that she study politics. She that is what she does, study politics. So you all need to get. I hope Ralph Don got his group together, and you all need to come out strong and support Ralph Don. <laughs> Anyhow, do not be blind with this government. Do not play a blind with this government. There is too many issues in Barbados. And some people like them, I mean, you're, you're going from the way you're talking, but you know, you got some people still um, taking up for the government. I, to tell you the truth, I'd be saying like, then they may get some kind of money, they, they pocket full of cash, but not my my empty. <laughs> so we need to we need to to be strong. We need to come together, stand up and fight. We can't go back, we can't go back and they say again. We are being fooled. The minister don't care about us. We do not see I do not see the minister in my country to see. A lot of them holiday. You ain't you saying they're coming out now. I ain't no election is in the air, but yet some, a few of them coming out talking now. I spoke about, I spoke about um, Bridgestone. Let me tell you, I hear all the talk about them painting you know, and then doing this and that. We ain't gonna Bridgestone, Bridgestone is the same thing. They had this, they had the um, crash show yesterday. That was poor. I went up there and said for myself, it was poor. Don't mind them and come back home for oh, it, it, it was it was good and this thing. Hello. I went and see for myself, it was poor. Only thing that was playing was the music. <laughs> a big love speaker playing music and no 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 customers to stand to buy things. Thank you. Have a good night. Y'all want to know who that lady really is? Y'all want to know who that lady really is? Well, I am a little undecided. <laughs> Listen, in a few moments, we're going to have a wonderful young gentleman come to speak to us. But I like to create trouble. I decided that I was going to look up some facts really quick. And I decided to look up Barbados' position in the corruption index in the Caribbean to discover that in the Caribbean and Latin America, Barbados ranks number three in corruption. And they say, this is Statista, which is one of the top areas for statistics, they say, that the index is a composite indicator that includes data on the perception of corruption in areas such as bribery of public officials, 
kickbacks in public procurement, embezzlement of state funds, effectiveness of government's anti-corruption efforts. My goodness, we are number three in Latin America and the Caribbean. Hear me? Let me tell you something. Course correction. When an aircraft is veering off course, the pilot is supposed to pull it back onto line. And if he don't pull it onto line, he gonna end up somewhere where he don't intend to be going. And if this government doesn't know how to course correct, please relinquish the pilot's seat and allow others who know how to course correct to guide the aircraft to a safe arrival. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that has been a blessing to us is the number of young people that we are seeing coming to the forefront on the behalf of their country. And this speaker that follows now is one of those young men. We have all benefited from his knowledge. And when I say we have all, I mean we have all benefited from his knowledge, even though we may be older than he is. But that is the respect that we in this movement have. You see, that is what this is. It's a movement. And it's difficult to stop a movement, especially when you have people in it, like our next speaker. I want you to put your hands together and welcome to the microphone, Mr. Kimar Stewart. Come on, make him feel welcome this evening. I pretending to be just, 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 just pretending to be just. I pretending to be just, just, I just pretending to be normal people. 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 Good evening to all of the members of the Rosai Parliament. I want to say how happy I am to be here with you on Hastings Rocks in Christchurch. Uh, this is a very special place for all of us. Uh, we sit on the coast of Barbados enjoying the ocean breeze. And this is one of the few areas that are left for the public of Barbados to come and enjoy the serene beauty of our country. So we must give thanks for a space like this. If we continue the way we are, spaces like this will become non-existent for all of us. And soon, very soon, you will see another hotel popping up here to compete with the one that is right there. So let us keep the fight going. I am very happy to see you all. I am very happy to be on the platform sharing with you and this evening I want to speak to you Barbados and Barbadians because I want to plead with you my people Barbados here and across the globe and diaspora and ask you a question are you willing to learn from your past mistakes? Are you willing to learn from the errors that we made as a people? Are we willing to correct the mistake we made in 2018 May when we voted 30 love? Are we willing to correct the next mistake when we voted 30 love again in 2022? And I dare see a question, a question about 30 love in 2022 because for the first time in Barbados' history, Barbadians were banned and robbed of their right to vote in a general election in Barbados. I want you, Barbadians, to focus on those two mistakes that we made and ask yourselves that question. Are we willing to learn from our past mistakes or are we willing to make that mistake a third time? The journey of Barbados, 1966, independence, many of you would remember the joy and the excitement associated with that time on the Garrison Savannah. And Barbados, since then and before, 
has been marked as a country of struggle. A life of Barbados was characterized by the struggle. And that struggle involves the family, that struggle involves friends, that struggle involves work, that struggle involves the church, that struggle involves the community, that struggle involves clubs, that struggle involves fraternity and otherwise, camaraderie. And we built the Barbadian society on the fact that we all struggled with the exception of the few. Today, all of us are forced to deal with the issues and the struggles associated with making that same mistake twice. So I'm gonna ask you, are you willing to make that same mistake a third time? The joys and the excitement of independence that it brought to this country that many Barbadians today in 2024 can still stand proud and celebrate what independence means to them. Not only as an individual, but as a country. Independence means the world to Barbados and it means the world to us as a people. However, one cool day in Barbados led to that joy and excitement being overtaken by pain, anxiety, confusion and anger when it was declared in the midst of the worst world's health pandemic that this country was going to a republic and Barbadians were left out of the experience of a republic the children of independence can never say that about Arrow and independence Independence involved all of us. However, the Republic involved a few. And Barbados had to go through the most inhumane treatment to do social distancing and wear masks. Those who were invited because they had a list of who could have attended the Republican ceremony. And they did not invite Caswell, a senator. So I am saying to you, my people, that the difference between then and now, you were there at the garrison, but who was there to celebrate republicanism? We were left out because republic was never about us Barbadians. That on October the 20th, 2021, a constitutional amendment act was passed in this country for Barbados to install its first president. That the parliament of Barbados voted to install this president on a new republic and in the midst of COVID and you were robbed of that life experience. So the same way people continue to celebrate independence today, who will celebrate one of the most draconian and wicked exercises to take this country to a republic and rob us of that experience and then go as far to disrespect not only the father of independence but to disrespect the people of Barbados when they wanted to change November 30th for Independence Day to Republic Day. And if not for the people of Barbados standing up and using the free education that was given to this country and speaking out against it after the leader of this country along with her no work ministers stood and said that they were never going to change it. They said that they were not going to change the anthem and some other issues that were going on surrounding independence of Barbados. But then they still went ahead and tried to change it. So we have to also deal with the struggle of lawyers in leadership. That was not the independence experience of Barbados. We had two statesmen who wanted what was best for Barbados. They were nationalists. They were about what happens here. 
but that has changed our error our error it has changed so the average man and woman in Barbados being left out of this republic being told that we now have a Barbadian head of state what they did surrounding even that moment was to say that the president of Barbados will only have a four year term you can count the years she was installed in 2021 this is 2024 so you have one more year until the term of the president of Barbados Sandra Mason is up and in the constitutional amendment act which speaks to the term that the president of this country will serve it says that the prime minister in association and consultation with the leader opposition shall extend the term of the president for another four years after they have consulted with the president and the president has agreed with that. They went on to say in the legislation that parliament can increase the tenure of the president by six months if they believe that parliament is likely to be dissolved. That includes if a general election is coming our parliament has that power. So I am telling you by February 21st of 2025, Barbados will be in the know as it relates to the future of the president of Barbados. And determining on if the president is allowed to continue in office or not, we will get a serious signal as to when general elections in Barbados will be held and they are going to be held at latest January 2027 constitutionally so pay attention to these things people all in the name of a forced republic that was never about Barbadians this republic that we live in one that involves the selling off of prime assets of Barbados, its land, the leasing of its airport for 30 years. And I'm sure when Richard Sealy comes on the platform, he will speak to that. We see people like Miss Ram, their properties being taken over by force. We see on the east coast of Barbados, that people are saying that they own the rocks out in the sea. One of the biggest moments of celebration in Barbados is that there are no private beaches around here. And Barbados will never endorse the fact of private beaches in this country. These beaches belong to me. And we will remove any fence, any blockade or so within the law of anybody coming into Barbados being so land and being misguided by corrupt people, not just government, that they can own the rocks out in the sea. So Barbados, I'm going to ask you, are you willing to make that same mistake again? Are you willing to learn from your past mistakes? Barbadians, the promise of a referendum was never given to you. The promise of consultation, not only on the Republic, but many other issues, national insurance, was it afforded to you? No. Consultation about going into IMF program, was it afforded to you? So are you willing to learn from your past mistakes, Barbadians? I want to say to you, Barbadians, proud children of independence, that under this new republic, 
the struggles that are being introduced to you are completely new and foreign. That they are saying to you that you will no longer be a proud barbarian if you did not take a digital ID. Remember that? And they were saying that you were going to be stateless. That you would not be a Barbadian if you did not take this digital ID. And they were going ahead with a deadline to say that if you did not take the ID, but X was the day, you'll be cut off for social services, cut off for holding a driver's license. Basically, you would have been nothing in your own country, Barbados. That was not the experience of independence. But it is the experience of a new republic, a republic without a republican constitution, who goes to the republic first and then to the American constitution after. <laughs> make up the rules first and go along after. Not make up the rules along the way. But then again, that is mere mathematics. But she don't pretend to know about it. So I am saying to you, Barbarians, that during the time when all of the countries through the Caribbean was independence was a wave through the whole Caribbean. We had something called constitutional conferences. I read all of them. Grenada, Dominica, Barbados. It was set up with the United Kingdom Secretary of State to allow for consultation as to what the constitution, what law, what governance will look like through the whole Caribbean. But you know what Barbados wants to be? I want to be the first to do. But are we inspiring others to the Caribbean to follow the example of Barbados, like what our past leaders did? I will leave that question to you. So a republic by force, a police and military state intended to be spied on by a cyber crime bill. A republic that is indebted $759 million to the IMF. We were zero dollars indebted to the IMF in 2018 before our first error when we voted this law in Turkey law. But since we have made that error twice, we now owe the IMF 759 million. That wasn't all we paid back some, but that is what we owe now. We signed two IMF programs in five years. Two IMF programs. Do not forget the fact that you were not consulted. Do not forget that without a cabinet in place, a deal was signed with White Oaks to restructure the debt of this country. And we defaulted on the foreign debt of Barbados, the first time ever in the history of this country. We went to IMF program in the 1970s or under former Prime Minister Tom Adams. We did not default on our debt. We went to IMF program under Sir Lloyd Sanford, former Prime Minister. We had the 8% cut. We did not default on our debt. But this government and Prime Minister, who was so determined, has entered into an IMF program after denying that they would. Defaulting on Barbados is debt. I say that they are going to buy, borrow 1% loans from the IMF. But I tell you, Barbados, you need to learn from your mistakes. Because the struggle introduced to this country is that we are now a republic, and I'm going to repeat it, without a declared republican constitution they have the committee and they're reviewing it and they're doing all of these things they're making the rules as we go along and we're heavily indebted to the IMF right. but I want to urge you and remind you that struggle is a natural part of life 
And that struggle has been the backbone of Barbadian life. So fear not. And anyone who thinks that he or she can make it through life without struggle, then you're sadly mistaken. And we tend to try to avoid struggle and we tend to try to deny it. But those who go through struggle are most likely to learn from it and become lifelong learners. And that the harsh lessons that need to be learned and that Barbadians need to learn may be coming through the fire that we are going through right now with this law who pretends to care about people. So again, I'm going to ask you, are you willing to learn from your mistakes? Are you willing to correct the mistakes you made by voting this law in 30 love twice and having a serious imbalance of power in this country? We need to balance the scales out. So, my people, as I come down to the latter part of my presentation, and I must say I'm enjoying myself. Many of you had hope literal hope that the barbarous economy would have been buoyant by now. That it would have gone in the direction that you would have been getting jobs both in the public sector, the private sector, you would have been getting salary increases, you know, you would have been getting proper job security, reduction in VAT, no more NSRL, no more road tax. And we thought that, you know, the whole project we thought that, you know, Barbados would have been mightily prosperous. But we were sold a covenant of hope that turned into a covenant of hopelessness. That a manifesto with so many holes and promises to the people of Barbados. And still we have people running around this place in a red shirt talking about somebody cares when they told you on the floor of parliament. I pretend to care about you. I pretended so much that I infiltrated the unions of Barbados. So much so that I took the general secretary of the Barbados Workers Union, a sellout, and put in the parliament of this country, forcing out poor Glenn Clark, Senator Glenn Clark, an elderly senior man to live in the cold in Canada in the middle of COVID calling a by election in the midst of a pandemic where is the general secretary of the Barbados Workers Union today as it relates to representing the people of Barbados she does not in fact the unions with the exception of Unity Workers Union have been dormant and complacent in representing the issues of the people of this country and as a reward for toppling a democratically elected government. And I dare say that they teamed up, the unions of this country teamed up to sabotage the last government, even having employers pay employees to march against it. The sellout general secretary of the Barbados Workers Union is sitting in the parliament in a seat in St. George North. And the second one that was the head of the NUPW that was ousted He's going to say, say, Michael Central constituency talking about he's becoming the next representative for the Barbados Little Party. But we thought that those unions had the best interests of Barbados at heart. But they showed you they pretended to care. They really did not. Sat down in the parliament and watched these representatives give themselves three pay raises created a post called senior minister and increased the senior minister's pay to that of deputy prime minister. So we got five or six people doing and being paid for the role of deputy prime minister. That is what they did to the people of Barbados. And wrapping up, people, I have one more minute, I believe. Right. We need to focus on our relationship as a country 
with the IMF and what it means for the future of Barbados and the debt that we are in and how we are going to pay back that debt. That if the leader of this country was a student of lifelong learning, they would have learned about our past experiences with the IMF and they should have took heed before they signed certain arrangements in this country. That today, that $759 million that we owe in IMF plus the billion dollars in interest payments that has to leave this country every year is choking this country and will choke future generations that have to pay back this money to the IMF and other institutions after we've been deceived and now the Prime Minister is in a newspaper trying to chastise the IMF speaking about surcharge fees and speaking about global interest rates and the increase in interest rates. If the leader of this country had been a student of lifelong learning, you would have known and you should have told the people of Barbados up front. I should have also waited and had consultation with the economists of Barbados, the political scientists, and the average citizens of this country who experience past MF programs and other people out there who have the knowledge that could have told you and only now for warn us and warned you not to put Barbados into a borrowing relationship with the International Monetary Fund. You went ahead and did it anyway because you're a despot. I, I am here to say to you tonight that we at the Rosso Parliament will continue to stand up against all levels of despotism, terrorism, and we will not be mother in Barbados. Cybercrime Bill or no Cybercrime Bill? Thank you very much. Great to be here. Have a great evening. Come on, let's hear from Mr. Kimar sir tonight. Thank you, Kimar. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's a little bit of housekeeping and then I'm out of the way really quickly. Miss Eastman has contacted us and she is not well. So remember her in your prayers. She was supposed to be with us tonight. But we have a special guest to conclude the evening, so you do not want to go anywhere, all right? And then, of course, listen, transparency, accountability. We are short around 1,700 bucks, and we need some donations from you. So this wonderful lady that you see uh, coming up here to the front, she's going to be coming around, and we're going to ask you to donate whatever you can that will go toward helping with the expenses in terms of this of this uh, roadside parliament and the balance on the march, all right? So let's move quickly into our next presenter, one of our online at Marcy Week show presenters. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and welcome Mrs. Rose Corbin. Come on, let's hear for her tonight. daughters all, craftsmen of, and women of her faith. Good evening. I'm indeed honored, humbled, and pleased to be here with you this evening. What a way to start my birthday week with you. And all in the interest of things national, all in the things related and concerns related to our democracy. I recognize that we are under time pressure, so I'm going to jump straight into it. You remember, <clears throat> pardon me, on Friday night, I did say on the show that I went up to Austin searching for $5 million. I'm curious because I don't know what $5 million look like. So I went up there looking, couldn't find it. Still to read in my newspaper, I had heard it on the TV, CBC, when the cameras were all on the 
senator with responsibility for culture in the Prime Minister's office. In her exuberance, she sought to de defend and account for the use, misuse may say, of that $5 million. And I heard it, but then I read it in print. And this is what she said. If anyone approaches you, whether there are thorns or roses, a rose by any name is still a rose, looks like a rose, and smells like a rose. If anyone approaches you, whether there are thorns or roses, and they ask you, why the government invested five millions in refurbishing Austin's Bay Garden, tell them that the government did it because you deserve it. Tell them that government did it because it is the vendors. Tell them that the government did it because of the craftspeople, the people in the fish market the everyday Barbadian. I may not be a vendor up there. I may not be a crass person. I may not be a person in the market, but I am an everyday Barbadian. And what I saw, I am not satisfied with as an everyday Barbadian. An everyday Barbadian, everyday Barbadians who have made Barbados, we did it for you. We did it for you. You know that I have repeatedly encouraged ourselves from accepting that anything that is done through the national funds through our taxes should not be politicized. Bay Gardens refurbishing, I'm still looking for it, should not be politicized. I wonder also why the Minister of the Marine and the Blue Economy, who has responsibility for the National Conservation Commission, responsible for the beaches, gardens, and settings like these, did not speak at that relaunching, that reopening of the refurbished Bay Gardens. Yet it was that senator responsible for culture who denied previously that she had no intentions for that constituency under the BLP from which the Honorable Minister of the Leader of the Opposition would have vacated when moving over to become the Leader of Opposition. However, be that as it may, let them fool themselves, not us. We are seeing and so we are looking for that five million. I am the roses looking for that five million. Let me pause here. I have no difficulty having that thorn attached to my stem. I would roses come with thorns and I am not partisan but I have no difficulty having that thorn attached to my stem and to my roots before I would allow any of them to come near me and I will tell you what I did today I went back up to Oystein because she challenged 
the roses about that five million dollars. So we're back up there with a measuring tape. So that I can come to you tonight to tell you what I found out. I was expecting, I thought I missed something on Friday. So I went back up there when there was no busyness in the afternoon. And what did I see? I counted starting from Granny's car park right through to um, the Bay Gardens. I counted 23 tanks with red covering, which would have replaced the coverings that were there before. You have gone up to Oysins at some time, and you know that you have sat on the tents by several establishments, haven't you? I saw 23 tents of varying sizes. The smallest one I measured was nine feet by nine, nine feet by almost say 10 feet. And others, I measured it. And others probably doubled that size. What I saw also, and mind you, the covering is so flimsy. And you know what tanks are like. The covering is so flimsy that I hesitate. And I am concerned about when the wind gets higher with the hurricanes coming across the Atlantic and the Caribbean Sea, that the canopy, the covering, can at any time just go off, be blown off. That's what I saw. I saw some of the, the canopies already dislodging themselves from the frame, and we are in mild breezes. I saw also for five million dollars exposed garbage. I saw the place located for the skip full of garbage, garbage collection bins scattered around, garbage scattered and the stench. Five million dollars. They did it for the vendors. They did it for the crafts people. They did it for the people in the fish market. And they did it for everyday Barbadians. Are you satisfied? I continued looking. I was expecting grand looking canopies you know like the ones they would have to say where they have to jump up down in the botanical garden i was looking for elaborate canopies i was looking for canopies that had the roll down you know when the rain falls you can't roll down and i like marquees i was looking for that elaborate classy thing and for the cross persons I went to the big side where they usually are situated. I was expecting chaos for them, nothing. Furthermore, that side, that big side seems to be neglected. Garbage strewn all over the place. Even the, the, the benches, the picnic benches, were not even painted or refurbished. Only what meets the eye because the everyday Barbadian is not like me who would go beyond the facade, who would be, go beyond the pretentious um, 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 things that would, would, would make us go all. Oh, but I went behind the scenes. And what I saw was disappointing. Over the side by grannies, not a drop of paint 
on those, those facilities over there. And if you remember, Granny started the activity in those things. You would go out there for the fried fish, you would go out there for the chicken liver and the gizzards. I used to go up there. I would carry visitors up there. Not even a drop of paint on that side. And just one lone tent. And over to the side there to the oil, um, you know, the oil receptacles. They didn't even put a paint on three or four kiosks or, or buildings, you know, um, facilities, they're not a drop of paint. But fooling us, because we are little children who like trinkets. Five million dollars. She said, if the thorns and the roses act about it, but this roses is publicly again asking, where is the five million dollars? I'm not seeing it. What I am seeing is that it's being politicized. What else did I see? I went up by the bus station, enough to break your ankle, and, I, and, and I'm in flat shoes. Not paved. One would assume that they would have taken the five million dollars and, 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 and put and, and do something to the bus terminal, making it easy for embarking and disembarking passengers, knowing that passengers commute from the northern side of the island, many visitors hop on that bypass bus from Spikestone to Oyston to go up to Oyston on Friday nights and Sunday, Saturday nights and Sunday nights. And one would have thought that they would have refurbished the bus, tank, the bus terminal and even put in some shelter from the elements for those waiting passengers. Nothing. And that's your five million dollars, not theirs. We have to pay back that loan. Where is it? I'm not a happy trooper tonight. Do you know, all right, I asked the person who was with me, how much you would say, and you all could do your calculations then. Find out the price of a nine by ten tent. <laughs> See how much money that is. I say if there were like a dozen nine by ten tents. See if now we had say eleven left back that are bigger. You can go up there with your imagine tape too, don't be frightened. It's not anarchy, it's not tyranny, it's responsibility. What they measure? Find out the cost of those tents. The paint, they refurbished some of the, 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 the um, kiosks, the, the establishment. But knowing this government, they like to go begging. Maybe they beg for the pain. Auditor General asks for the bill. I'm not Auditor General, but I do my own auditing. And what I'm coming up with ain't look good. Ain't look good. And I did my calculations. And I said, you know, if they had conservatively, you know, with a little bit of steel in there. Steel. S-T-W-E-L. S-T-E-A-L. You could still get at least 20. 20. At least two bedroom, one bedroom houses for at least $250,000. You're, you're all working with me. I pretend to be good at numbers. I pretend to be good at math. But I'm pretending to love my people. I love my people. That's why I am here tonight. That's 
that's why I want them to wrote it, asking the questions. We would have gotten at least 20 houses at two a quarter million dollar each. What have we have done that? Those displaced persons in Wellington Street would have had housing as quick as they could do a, a refurbished or extensive Bay Garden with five million dollars. They could have started with, with helping those persons to get a home. And if we had gone more conservatively and we had said, look, business houses for $200,000, we would have at least have gotten, what, 25 houses. And I'm not talking about the chaos that they're building and calling, calling houses. I don't jump into people's Facebook chatter. But what I did look at recently, someone put up a picture of a kiosk. And my people who are too blind to see congratulations and leave the government alone. It better than nothing, and because we have resigned ourselves to accepting nothing, they give us nothing. And I had to comment, it is because we resigned to say it is better than nothing they are giving us care. Did a damn Billy Miller on that interview about her life commented on the chaos that they built down on the Spring Garden Highway, the, the Griner Highway, whatever it's, the, it's renamed to. And she called the vendors tall chaos, Le Pen's. And she was saying, greater respect is needed. I challenge you, I wanted to come here tonight, but I got swung off. I wanted to come here tonight to talk about the emperor's new coat, sewn with invisible thread and non-existent fabric. And that is what, and I will speak to it online, that is what this government is doing, sewing things with invisible tray, sewing using invisible fabric, and seeing that they are doing it for everyday Barbadians. We deserve better. And I challenge you tonight not to go easy in accepting this. The flamboyancy, the flippancy, the dismissive, taking everything for a joke. Do you see it in Paris Beach? How persons are, the jokes they make, and when somebody, you did you see the one in St. Joseph? When the lady was again, she said, I've been to, this is my third, I think, and I've spoken to you about transportation, public transportation, the, the, the quality of the roads. I've spoken to you about all these things, and, 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 and nothing has been done. And the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister said, trivialize it, <laughs> Mr. President, I cook, cook, cook for me. But that was the response to something serious. And when the lady said, Prime Minister, I'm not going there. I am talking about matters affecting us in St. George. The Prime Minister got riled. And we saw a different person. All the time they were joking. They joke with us. They make mockery of her common sense and intelligence. Join with me to protest about that five million dollars. Equate it to something that you know that would be visible, that would be transparent, that there will be, that one can account for. 
do not let them continue to sow and parade in the emperor's new court with nothing to show and as the story goes the emperor paid for that nothingness called a new court out of the public purse and that's what happening to us good night folks and join with me i'm telling you take your um take measure and go up our stance and measure for yourself god bless you from craftsmen of first day one day coming soon, these people will be happy. One day coming soon, these people will say happy. Come on, let's hear it for those coming. It will be free. One day coming. Come with them, them body. Just to remind you of the donations, if you wish to assist, please make sure you see that young lady that was moving around in that white top and whatever else. All right, so please, we look forward to your help and your assistance. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our final speaker for the night, an individual who is no stranger to the political realm of Barbados, a former minister of government, we may be apolitical, but we are Barbadians. And I'm glad to see that members of other parties are understanding and seeing that the interest here is Barbados. And so because that is our focus, we have persons who are sharing their views and perspectives with us for our nation of Barbados. And so I want to ask you to put your hands together and welcome to the microphone, the Right Honorable Richard Seeley to address us this evening. Come on, let's hear it. Let's hear it for him this evening. Come on. Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you, Ferdy, or should I say, Ferdy's fine, or Pastor Nichols, and greetings to all of you. Thank you, thank you, Marcia, for inviting me, and this is a lovely evening. I, uh, of course, normally when I'm at a lectern with a microphone, it's political in nature but of course this is not or rather let me rephrase that this is not a, a partisan platform oh it is very political indeed can I get more political than this I mean after all I look I looking at Caswell Franklin you can't have one more a bigger politician than him but it is not partisan so I am not here in my capacity of which you probably are most familiar. I'm here as a believer, a believer in Barbados, Absolutely. hence a patriot, a believer in Christ as a Christian. And therefore, there are just a few things I need to do. Well, a couple of things I have to say and a few things I would like to say, but because I know our time is limited, I'll start with what I have to say and then may, maybe get into some of the things I want to say that I think are quite important. I have to salute the entire effort of this team, the People's Parliament, and of course the wonderful work they're doing online. It is extremely important. A democracy is enriched when you have people outside of the pure political sphere who out of a love for Barbados are prepared to advance those causes that are important and they're not doing it lightly when you listen 
to Marcia, when you listen to Kimar, when you listen to Maxine, when you listen to Caswell, they've done their work. They've read, they've researched, they've done a lot of thinking, and they present to edify and educate. And that is extremely important work. And again, I thank you for the invitation. And I think it's going beyond an opportunity to speak here at the lovely Hastings Rocks. I am taking it as we embarking on a relationship. And I am not taking it lightly either. I already told Ferdy that we can have you somewhere in that St. Michael South Central area. And I know funds are a little tight. I can pass the hat too. And we can make sure that we can have you somewhere out there because this is important. As I say, this is necessary. And it is particularly important when we consider what is going on in Barbados. We have a government that is simply obsessed with what looks right and what sounds right. It's all about PR. And you know, Reverend Joseph Adderley, he, put down a gem of a presentation tonight. I, I always remember, I understand he's still here somewhere in the background and uh, I, I, I want to say greetings to him, my, my, my former parliamentary colleague. When I first started, we were, we were parliamentarians together. But I remember him telling me something that always lived with me. In fact, I researched it and it's true. Rat poison. 98% of what is in rat poison is actually the same thing that attracts rats, scraps, and so on. It is the 2% in rat poison that kills them, you know. You have to be very careful with the messaging. You have to cut through the PR clutter. That is what you have to do. And indeed, in an environment like this where there's so much voter apathy, hardly anybody voted the last election, it was worse last election, the one before that, when the government was changed, a lot of people simply did not vote. And again, I am a member of a political party, and I will say from this platform, if you're serious about reaching out to those who are disenchanted and disheartened, you better get close to groups like this, because they can speak to them in a way that neither of the two political parties can. Is it by chance right now, more people are tuning in online to listen to me and you and all of you here than any official party function, you know, any DLP, any BLP streaming, they don't get the numbers that Marcy Weeks gets, you know. And what does that tell you? It tells you that you're tuning in to the very soul of Barbados. And so I say that you are ideally suited to cut through the clutter. Pastor Nichols, he said he prefers to be called for you. You know, he's a bit of a songbird. And there was a... There's a song and that used to talk about, I dare not listen to the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. So you have to not allow the sweet frame to get to you, but you have to be prepared again to cut through all of it and to listen to the people who are working on your behalf. And I am really excited about this alliance that you're building with the leader of the opposition, particularly in his capacity as the chairman of the Public Accounts Committee, he got a lot of work to do in that regard. A lot of things need to be looked at. I remember telling him about the hope, the hope, the hope, the, the disaster that they call Hope Inc. Um, and of course the Chinese houses. I didn't even remember to mention on this issue of housing. What about the, 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 the prefab houses from Suriname and Guyana? I, you, you know, I, have you heard anything about it lately? What is it about housing that seems to be a problem with this government? And you know, we, uh, well, when I, I had an opportunity to be part of the government, government after a year, we, we have all 
five, six, six hundred thousand in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. How much have, have they done, done in seven, seven years? years? About thirty, and they basically we call it a photovoltaic farm. Telling people to go and live underneath the photovoltaic panels and top with a housing solution. But that's another thing. Again, I'm not here to be a partisan. And what I speak, the spirit in which I'm speaking in is very much that of a patriot. I'm highlighting these issues not as a part of any vote-getting exercise per se. There will be a time for that and a place for that. This is about edifying, educating, and empowering people and not allowing the noise to get to you. Something very current, you know, and I'm, I'd listen to Sister Corbin talk about all of the, uh, the various promises around this World Cup and the money that was spent. You know what's really ironic? You know, we hosted this very same event in 2010. Barbados had the T20 World Cup final in 2010. And yes, we had some arrivals and yes, we had some activity. Blakey's ain't looking no different than they're looking now. Well, what's all the hullabaloo about? But this government seems to take these opportunities of these events to simply splash money, or should I say hose money all over the place. And that's all that, that, that $5 million was about, um, thing, Sister Carbon. And it's as simple as that, an excuse to spend money. And we don't know what they spent $50 million. I remember very well in 2010 when through BTI we had a repaint. They gave us some paint and things to dress up the place. I'm not saying you don't do a few things to prepare for an international event. But we've been having international cricket in Barbados since 1930, I believe it is. Almost 100 years. Don't let's get too carried away. Do what we have to do and execute and I sincerely hope that all goes well I understand the people have left now they're coming back for the super eights and we sincerely hope it works out well but there's no need to get on like if this is something we're doing for the first time and use it as an excuse to go out there and frankly speaking try to buy people and buy votes 50 million dollars on Kensington where I'm happy what's going on in Oysters, but as I said, you bypass so many urban communities in order to get at Oysters because you vexed with Rob Thorne. That, that doesn't make any sense to me. But the real... But the real reason that this gathering is so important and all of you who are online is the simple reality that the quality of life in Barbados is in serious and precipitous decline and it has to be arrested and indeed the speaker that said earlier that political parties have to change their approach they really touched a chord in my own heart because as I look at my political party, with all of its achievements and all of its challenges, we certainly have to change and embrace and prepare ourselves for the task that lie ahead. And one of the important elements I alluded to this earlier, but I'm going to speak to detail, is that if you are serious about forming a government and a serious government in the future and in the not too distant future, you better embrace all of the elements out there that have something to offer, not only in opposition to the current government, but meaningful alternatives that you can embrace. It was done before in 2008. We had to embrace all of those elements out there that were against the government. It happened in 1986 and 1961 with Errol Barr. The, the history 
of the Democratic Labour Party forming these alliances is sound. And indeed, if the party is serious, as I know that it is, this sort of building, the building these bridges, they are important. And you build them well aware that these are forces that when you come into government may very well be critical of what you're doing, but in a constructive way. And you have to have the maturity to take it on board in order that you can embrace it in the national interest. And that is why I had to accept this invitation as well. Apart from my own personal reasons, it is important that the party sends the right signal. We are with you and you are with us and we are together on this course to get Barbados back on track. It is as simple as that. The ball ring. Thank you. Kema really said all that needed to be said in that regard. We could have gone to the IMF a long time ago, you know. But we resisted it for a reason. We got criticized for it. A lot of these private sector interests and so on. All them gone silent. No, of course, they can't get people out of them. They loved Barbados so much and the government was so terrible and now you can't hear nothing out of them. But that's why this grouping is also so important. So keep passing the hat and keep the work going. Keep the online online effort going because somebody got to do it. Because all the end groupings that were so vocal, so visible, what happened to them now? You know, they were. It is, it, 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 it is brazen hypocrisy. That's what it is. And simply pursuing self-interest. And we can't build a country like that. That's why it's so important. But the truth is, Kimar and all of you out there who look at this debt situation, the only real sustainable way out of it is to start to earn. We've got to start to earn. We have to build out our capacity for those sectors that are earning, foreign exchange earning. And I will tell you straight up, I am not detecting any sincere plan to really get us out of this situation here. I keep hearing about the loans. A new loan here, a new loan there. But I'm not hearing about the plans to expand and earn. I'm not hearing that. And honestly, I don't even know if Sherlock Holmes could detect what the plan is. We need, I, 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 I'm being very serious on this point because, you know, we have, we have grandparents in Barbados who are encouraging their grandchildren to leave Barbados because there's no future. That was never the case before. You would tell your child or your grandchild go away and study and come back. But now you're saying listen there's nothing here for you and we don't really know and I don't know how you can handle paying back all that debt that this woman borrowing so try and make your life someplace else and that is the surest way to underdevelop a country. You see this thing called the brain drain? It has destroyed some of our neighbors. That's right. That's right. And we need to guard against that by making sure we can provide meaningful livelihoods for our young people who are highly frustrated when they look around and don't see any hope for the future. I'm only going to say as well that continue the fight for your ability to use the new media, the social media end of things. I'm not a big social media person, but I understand it has democratized the whole question of the media. Once upon a time, you had to sit down and wait on the wire service to provide information for you. Those days, people don't even, they probably got people in here who don't even know what the wire service is. If you talk about uh, Reuters or 
Uh, you be, I don't know what you're talking about. No, everybody, everybody wants to go one of these air correspondent. No. Um, so things have changed. And this government, again, being disingenuous, they, 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 they made a meal out of it when they're in opposition. Oh, Lord have mercy. I can tell you, the only thing they didn't say about us is that we had, we were red and had two horns coming up the top of our head. They said everything imaginable about the then government and its leadership. But what they've come to learn, social media, a lovely sword, but it ain't such a good shield though. And they're holding, they're holding a lot of hand. And so what they're trying to do, legislate it out of, um, of existence, the criticism, but it ain't going nowhere. This will continue. I'm happy to be a part of it. I want to thank you profusely for having me. And as I say, I want to reciprocate. I'll have you also attend uh, my St. Michael South Central family. We'll host you. And, um, and again, we will find a few, a few dollar bills to put in a sack and pay for the system and we'll, we'll, we'll have, you, have, you, have you on board. So once again, I thank you for having me and I will return in my introduction to where I was on my introduction and that is to salute the wonderful work of the team behind all of this effort. And everybody online that is enriching this exercise, providing comments, and providing support and encouragement, I want to salute you as well. You are doing a remarkable job for this country and it will not go in vain. We will be the better for it in the long run. Once again, thank you very much and God bless. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of a great night. Wonderful night. And we particularly want to thank those of you that have been viewing online. I understand that we were up over a thousand and forty something people tonight online. So we are so pleased to have had you join us, those of you that are online. Don't forget your donations and don't move anywhere because you are not dismissed until our national anthem is played. We are protectors, strict guardians of what? Our heritage and firm craftsmen of our faith. Dave, our national anthem, please. for coming tonight ladies and gentlemen god bless you and get home safely thank you so much